When the first Army Men game landed on the N64, it's true to say that nobody was quite ready for the huge success it became. Sure, it never hit the numbers that first-party titles often reach, but coming from a relatively small studio is one of the surprise franchise hits of the year. What is more surprising though is that it did so well despite generally mixed reviews. Army Men Sarge's Heroes was never known for its tight controls, excellent graphics or even storyline, but the core gameplay and themes it contained resonated with many gamers, so much so that the 3DO company instantly put into development the follow-up. Landing on store shelves in the year 2000, Army Men Sarge's Heroes 2 picks up where the first game ended, and with the Tan Army leader General Plasto trapped in the real world in an unanimated form, a special serum had been created which allows him to become reanimated, and thus he seeks revenge on our heroes. Throw into this mix the new Blue Army, and there's just enough present to keep you interested in the game's new direction. In broad terms, the game's 18 levels fall into the same three categories as they did in the first game. You have your standard search and kill missions, levels where you must defend targets, and finally rescue operations. Like the first game, there is quite a detailed tutorial mode where you can get to grips with the character controls and weapons. Thankfully, there are some new additions to the arsenal in this game, and so if you are a veteran of the first game, it's still worthwhile doing the tutorial just so you can refresh your skills and get to grips with this new weaponry. When you jump into the main campaign mode, it's still disappointing that the cutscenes which begin and end most levels are still really limited. It's not uncommon to have black screens with small static images and lines of text. There are moments when some animated scenes take place, but these are often crudely made, and seem to lack a purpose rather than killing a few more moments. The gameplay this time around though seems to lack some clear identity. Perhaps it's because the first game felt so fresh and unique, or perhaps it's because the levels as a whole are not as inspired this time around, but for me the feel of the game lacked that same sense of creativity. There are some cool ideas like the level inside a pinball machine and the graveyard, but many levels seem too formulaic, and there's one heck of a difficulty curve. It's not uncommon in the later levels to begin a mission and then just seconds into it be blown to pieces and not have a clue what's just happened. This time around the levels seem to have been designed with a more trial and error approach to them, and whereas the first game it was more about exploration and map memorization, and that was more important. All of this is also hindered by the frankly poor controls. Kudos to the 3DO company for attempting to improve these as they were a problem for gamers playing the first game, but it seems that in attempting to make the improvements they have left the overall control system far worse. Simple things in a third person action game like strafing feels awkward and stiff, and instead of a free flowing camera it seems to just jolt from position to position, often putting itself in bad areas. The assisted aim is also another example of this. There will be times when it will detect and lock onto an enemy with a little problem, but other times you'll need to be facing them dead on in order for hits to be registered. It's a small annoyance to begin with, but in the second half of the game where the enemies use cover much more effectively, it means you'll be spending more time bringing up your first person aiming mode than running forward and mowing down tons of enemies. In the first Sarge's Heroes it was easy to forgive the below par visuals because the gameplay had got it so right. I was hoping for some improvements in Sarge's Heroes 2, and sadly they don't seem to have ever arrived. Even with the expansion pack enabled, the game is almost unplayable due to the terribly choppy frame rate. In the standard resolution mode, the engine seems to be able to handle most things thrown at it, aside from multiple enemies on screen at the same time. Without voice acting, the game also suffers at times from a lack of personality. The game spends a great deal of time trying to give each character a motive and some character, but with the graphics being blurry and your team being green, some even heavily compressed lines of dialogue would really have helped. The rest of the audio is compressed quite heavily too, and if you have a good quality set of speakers, the shortcomings are clear to hear. The music and effects fit the game well, but do little to add or detract from the overall experience. It's almost a bittersweet experience playing Army Men Sarge's Heroes 2. If I had played this before the first game, then perhaps the same sense of excitement and fun would have been present, but the first game set the bar high in terms of gameplay that sadly Sarge's Heroes 2 just doesn't seem to live up to it. After having played Army Men Sarge's Heroes, were you eagerly anticipating this follow-up? Or did you make this a day one purchase, rather than picking it up in a rental? After having played Army Men Sarge's Heroes, were you eagerly anticipating this follow-up? Did you make this a day one purchase, or did you stick to giving this a rental first after the below average reviews of the game that it was met with on its release? 
Let me know what ideas you'd have liked to have seen in the third game in the series if it had been released on the N64. As always, let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section down below, and until next time.